All right, so this lesson, we're starting chapter five, um, trigonometric functions and their graphs. Okay, so we've been dealing with uh, trig functions like sine, cosine, tan, reciprocal functions uh, like cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And now we're going to talk about the graphs of those. We are also going to get into the very important concept of, um, you know, the transformations. Okay, so vertical transformation, uh, phase shift, with it, which is the horizontal translation. So, uh, an amplitude, of course, as well, is the, um, uh, you know, the vertical stretch. Okay, and period, right, this, this is the horizontal stretch. So, if you remember the transformations from all those other kind of graphs that we did, we're going to look at sine and cosine graphs in the first section here. Then we're also going to do the transformations of those graphs and see how the different parameters uh, work to change those graphs as well. All right? So, look at that pretty. Isn't that pretty? Wow. Well, I wonder where that is. That is where it say? Hmm. Geology. Talk about geology anyways. Studies composition, structure, history of the Earth's surface, blah, 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 blah. So, if you want to be a real rock star, you want to go into geology. Okay. Awesome. So, we're going to be sketching graphs of sine and cosine. Okay? We're going to be looking at those today. And how are we going to do that? This is how we're going to do that. We're going to take a look at our old friend, the unit circle. All right? If the unit circle is actually your friend, I'm afraid you do have social issues. And that means you're a math teacher then. Uh, like this is my friend. But anyways, we're also going to transfer the coordinates for each angle for sine and for cosine onto a graph. Okay? So this is just a regular old graph right here. And if you want to label this, you certainly can. That's why, of course, this is the x uh, value right here. And we, we do have some negative values and some positive values for x and negative and positive for y. So let me just uh, show you. This unit circle, okay, is just a, a special way of showing um, how angle measures, right? We're talking about angle measures here. How angle measures, how they're related to the cosine and the sine for that angle measure. So that's, that's what we've been using the unit circle for. The thing is, is that this is one way of displaying that information. We, of course, could use x and y, and we could put the values, we could put all of this on a Cartesian plane, which is this x, y plane over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. Now, from 0, 0 right here, and should I use yellow maybe? Okay, 0, 0. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to make this 2 pi. All right, so we're going to go from 0, we're going to go to 2 pi, and we're going to show sort of the, uh, we'll start with sine, show the sine values. Now we're also going to go to uh, negative 2 pi, which looks like it might be over here somewhere. So on your graph, if you wouldn't mind, just start kind of copying this down. So pi will be exactly halfway, best you can. Negative pi will be exactly halfway here. And then, of course, half of pi is pi over 2. And here's the negative pi over 2. And half of pi over 2 is what? If you half a fraction, you double the denominator. Okay? So half of half is a quarter. Half of a quarter is one eighth. Half of an eighth is a sixteenth, and so on. So we have, what goes here? And again, we learned this in the unit circle, but let's just transfer it over here. So what would go here? Sir? 3, 6, 7, 3. Thank you. 3 pi over 4. Good. So 3 pi over 4. Now, does that make sense? Let's just see. This is 1 quarter. This is 2 quarters. This would be 3 quarters. And this would be 4 quarters, right? 1, 4 over 4. So yeah, that is awesome. Okay. So let's just uh, let's go on this side to the right. Let's fill out some more. So what's going to be halfway between 1 pi and 2 pi? Well, in decimal, we think maybe 1.5 pi, which in a fraction is 3 pi over 2. 3 over 2 is 1.5. See? So let's see if that makes sense. We have 1 pi over 2. We have 2 pi over 2. This should be 3 pi over 2. And, of course, this should be 4 pi over 2, which it is. Okay? Are we getting that? 
So th these are the same things we did to understand the unit circle, and we're just going to do the same things on this Cartesian plane. Okay? And the Cartesian plane is just this x, y cross here. Okay, where are we? Okay, so let's quickly fill in this one and this one, I think. So what goes here? Any guesses? It's a multiple of one quarter. One, two, three, four. Five pi over four. Very good. Okay. So that's 5 pi over 4. That means this should be 6 pi over 4. Is 3 over 2 pi, is that equal to 6 pi over 4? It sure is. Yeah. So what should go here? 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. And of course, if you look back at the unit circle, right, here's 1 pi over 4, here's 2 pi over 4, here's 3 pi over 4, Here's 4 pi over 4, here's 5 pi over 4, here's 6 pi over 4, and here is 7 pi over 4. This one would be 8 pi over 4. Okay. So hopefully you're able to see how we put that scale in there. All right. Questions? Okay. I'm just going to erase. Ah! Sorry. Say that again. What would be after 2 pi? Well, okay, if we went past 2 pi, it's a good question. Um, if we're, each of these tick marks is in um, uh, multiples of 1 quarter pi, right? Pi over 4. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pi over 4, right? So the next one would be 9 pi over 4. Yep. The next one would be 10 pi over 4, which you'd have to simplify to 5 pi over 2. See that? And then um, 12, or was I, 11 pi over 4, and then 12 pi over 4 would be the next one, which we could simplify to, what does that simplify to? 6 over 2, which is 3 pi. See that? So totally, you could do this scale really easily uh, and just use your smallest uh, scaling here. So that in our case, it's pi over 4. And then just count multiples, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, all, as far as you want to go. But then you'd have to just reduce that fraction, okay, to match it up with the unit circle. But yeah, it's a good question. Okay, now we we can fill out this last part. Let's just uh, maybe not as, let's just go 3 pi over 2 here and we'll just call that a day for now. I want to focus on this part of the graph. Now... I know this is a bit small here, so I apologize. I'm going to be doing a lot of work on this section right there. All right, so here we go. Blew up a little bit for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at uh, all of this, and we're going to start with pi over 4, all right? And we're going to place the points on the unit circle on the Cartesian plane and see what happens. So pi over 4, let's deal with, uh, let's do sine first, okay? Sine theta. We're going to graph sine theta here in blue. So if we go to pi over 4, what's the value for sine theta here? It's root 2 over 2, right? It's the second coordinate. Now, if I just take a quick look at some of these other ones, so pi over 2 is the next one. I have 1, and then I have root 2 over 2 again, and then I have 0, and so on, right? This is what I'm, this is what I'm actually looking at here, these numbers. So what you want to notice here as far as as far as the y values go, because the x values you notice are the angles. The y values are going to be the coordinates. The largest y value that I see is positive 1. So I'm going to put a positive 1 here. That's as far, that's as high as my graph is going to go here. Does everyone see that? Because root 2 over 2 is, is less than 1. And it goes down to negative 1. Down to negative 1. So let's go ahead and do this thing. So pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. What is that as a decimal? Who remembers what root 2 over 2 is as a decimal? You remember? Oh, let's clear all this stuff. Okay, so if you don't remember, yeah, it's going to be either the 0 0.7071 or the 0 0.861, right? Because those are the two numbers. So this is 0 0.707, root 2 over 2. So you're going to go x value of pi over 4. That's related to 0 0.707. And just do your best. This is just kind of a sketch for now. But that's the point. Here's the first point right here. Everybody see that? Pi over 4, comma, root 2 over 2, because that's the sign. 
here's theta, there's sine theta. So the graph is y equals sine theta. Okay, flash me a thumbs up if this is making sense so far. Okay. All right, let's keep going. So pi over 4 here is root 2 over 2. What is the next one? Pi over 2. That is 1. So pi over 2, you'd lay, put your y value there at 1. So now we've got, well, really, I guess this 0, 0, right? We didn't do the 0, 0 first, but of course, 0, 0 is part of this graph. So we've got three points right now. And we're building this sine graph. Okay, so as we move along, 3 pi over 4 is the next one, and that's root 2 over 2 again. So we go 3 pi over 4 up to root 2 over 2. Right there. It's the exact same spot as this first this point here. Uh, pi, what's pi? Well, pi is 0, so point there. And as we move through, 5 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. 7 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And we see some symmetry happening. 2 pi is 0. Okay. So if you were to fill in all the rest of these points, and I won't, but pi over 6 is 1 half. So where's pi over 6? Well, here's pi over 8. So pi over 6 is going to be up here a little bit. So 1 half is going to be right about here. And you see what's happening here? If you fill in all these points, then you get this sort of graph happening. And I'm just going to draw a smooth curve through these points. And this is the shape of the graph that we have just been drawing here. All right, so again, what we're doing is we're transferring all the values for sine for the angles on the x-axis here, that's from the unit circle, transferring them onto a graph to take a look at what this looks like. All right. So that's from 0 to 2 pi. You see that? Here's, here's 0 to 2 pi. Any questions about that so far? Do, do you recognize the shape of this graph? You've seen that before, right? That's a sign. Uh, now, I was going to do the negative side, which I, I think um, I, I think I won't right now. Instead, what I'd like to do is I'd like to switch now to cosine. Okay, so let's see. What color should we use for cosine? How about red? All right, I'm going to erase all the blue over here in the unit circle. And cosine, let's do cosine now. So, we're gonna, we got zero here on the graph. So, what's the cosine value? Well, now we're looking at the first coordinates of each point. So cosine of 0 is 1. Agreed? So on the graph, we have 0 as an angle. Right? Cosine of 0. So 0 is an angle. And then we go up to 1. And we put a point right there. So we're going to do the cosine graph on top of the sine graph. Oh, I'm sorry. That's be close. <clears throat> In red. Alright. Pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Oh, look at this. It's the exact same point as sine. Cool. Pi over 2 is what? 0. So pi over 2 and 0. Those are the coordinates. So again, your angle is your x. The values on the unit circle for the points for cosine would be your y. So 3 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And pi is negative 1. 5 pi over 4, negative root 2 over 2. Oh, look at that. Coincides with the sine graph again there. 3 pi over 2, the cos is 0. And the last one here, 7 pi over 4, is positive root 2 over 2. I guess that's not the last. But it's kind of close. So that's about there. And then 2 pi is the same as 0 here, and that's 1 again. All right, so <clears throat> from 0 to 2 pi, this is sort of what the cosine looks like. And, of course, we could fill in pi over 6 is 1 half. So pi over 6 is, I'm sorry, pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. 
So pi over 6 would be right about here. Root 3 over 2, that's the point 8, 6. So that's going to be right around here. And you can see that what we're doing here is now we're, I'm going to just going to sketch this. Now this is what the cosine graph looks like. Looks like this. And oops, go back up here. So this is what the cosine graph sort of looks like from 0 to 2 pi. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but they, they kind of do mirror each other a little bit. And maybe it's a little more clear if I stretch the cosine back. I'm going to stretch the cosine back a little bit. So let's go to negative uh, pi over 4 is going to be positive root 2 over 2. So we're going to have uh, this as a value. And for cos again, let's go to negative pi over 2. That's going to be 0. So you see, you can work in the negative direction and still plot these points. Now maybe you'll see this a bit better. Now if I do that, do you see something? Do you see how the cosine graph, which is right here, and the sine graph, which is right here, They are the exact same shape, amplitude, period, I mean, horizontal kind of stretch, right? They're, they're exactly the same, except one is shifted from the other. So if we graph them on the same, uh, the same domain, so if I back this up now, and I get rid of this negative stuff, you see, then what you're going to see then is that they do look a little different, but they are actually the same shape of graph and everything, just one is shifted over a little bit. Okay? Any questions there? Okay, so that's an introduction to sine and cos. That's, that's how we take the, the information from the unit circle, and we're going to put it on this x-y axis graph. Okay? Those are the shapes of the graphs. Sine and cos. All right, so this is in your textbook, and here they do a real good job of laying this out fairly uh, clearly as well. So here's here's y equals sine theta, and we did radians, of course, uh, there from 0 to 2 pi, and they included pi over 6, and I got 2, right? But you also have to realize that the degree values for those radians, that also works too, right? And so there's a the little comparison there. I did want to show you, uh, talk to you about uh, some definitions. So... The reason why, and here's here's sine that's continued on in the negative direction that I, we didn't quite finish, but notice that a sine graph is, it, it repeats itself. And so that fact that the sine graph repeats itself means that it is a periodic function. So a periodic function, you might want to write this down in your notes, is a function that repeats itself over regular intervals or cycles of its domain. So periodic motion is a repeated motion in science. A periodic function is a graph, a function that has uh, that it repeats itself. Okay? And here we see that that's true. The next piece that you're going to want to understand is what is a period. Okay, if we talk about a period in a sports game, a period is a section of time from beginning. In the beginning, there's an end that is um, very discreet, right? It's uh, that's sort of the length of time that we're talking about. So a period, when we're talking about the function, is the length of the interval of the domain over which the graph repeats itself. So basically, a period is just like in basketball or in, in uh, hockey, you have three periods, right? They're identical, they're the same length. And so they repeat themselves. And so here in red, in your diagram, this is one period. It has a beginning, it has an end, and after that, it starts over again. So it might be easier to see, uh, you know, maybe from here, right? From this spot right here at negative 2 pi. So it's up, down, back to start. Up, down, back to start. See? It repeats itself over and over. So one period is the length of one of those repeated sections. And what's a sinusoidal curve? Well, a sinusoidal is basically a sine-like and both sine and cosine are sinusoidal. It's the name given to a curve that fluctuates back and forth like a sine graph. So it is sine-like. 
you'll hear me say this sinusoidal curve. You'll see it in the book often. Um, you'll see this word as well. So for those of you that maybe English is not your first language, you have to recognize this word, oscillate. So that means back and forth repeatedly. Okay, oscillate. Back and forth. Up, down. From one sort of extreme to another. Over and over. There is a center line that would be considered a center line as well. And, um, yeah. So those three terms are ones you will need to understand. Any questions? Why is the second period on the negative? I'm not sure what you're talking about. So, like... Are you talking about this, sort of this yeah, section of the graph? Why does it go down? Oh, so you're, okay, so you're asking here, this period right here, it starts from here to here. Okay, um, yeah, what you can, you can, the period length is the exact same in both cases, right? So we're dealing with the same graph. But how you measure the period can be different. The thing is, is that this graph may be shifted upward, and so you might not know where the center line is. But what you would be able to easily see is where the lowest point on the dip is. And so you could calculate the period by using, um, you remember in science this is called a trough of a graph like that? A trough? Maybe? No? Physical science? Physics? Anyways, the lowest point, okay, the lowest extreme here, to the next lowest extreme, that's how you can calculate the period. Those are sometimes easier to see than what the middle point is. So I think what this is saying is that you can calculate the period either way. I could also go from the top of this peak to the top of the very next peak in the repeated cycle, right? The corresponding part of the next repeated section. And that's another way you can calculate the period. All those numbers will be the exact same as on the sinus curve. Okay, good question. Any other questions? No? Awesome. Okay. Um, finally, we do want to talk about amplitude. Where is amplitude? Okay, again, if you guys are science uh, people, if you've been through some physics, uh, if you've been through physical science 20 with me last semester, you'll know what amplitude is on a wave, right? And this is really the sine curve. It's like a wave, right? So the amplitude, uh, it's the maximum vertical displacement of the graph from what would be that horizontal center line to any of the peaks. Okay, amplitude. amplitude, amplitude. So from the middle to the top, or from the middle to the bottom, that's the amplitude. If you don't know what the middle is, so for example, another way to look at that, let's say that we don't know what the middle is. We have this uh, this graph right here. Let's just draw one real quick. Okay. And you have a sine graph that kind of looks like this, okay? A rough sketch of a sine graph. And you're like, gee whiz, I don't know what the middle is. Is it here? Is it here? Is it here? I mean, I can make a pretty good guess, but I don't really know. How you do this is you simply go, what's the maximum point here? And what's the minimum point? And then you divide this section by 2. So that length divided by 2 equals your amplitude. So that's your max displacement minus the min displacement divided by 2 equals your amplitude. Okay, that's another way you can do that. Of course, if this center line is actually on the x-axis, then you're good. You can just count up from the middle. But it's also this entire span divided by 2. All right, we've got the graphing calculators out here now. Um, I've asked the class to change their window settings to this. So if you have a TIE3 and you're working along here, change your window settings to these right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, use the graphing calculator to sketch a graph of sine and cos. Let's see what it looks like. So let's see. This is what the graph should look like. We haven't inputted anything yet. In order to input something, let's hit y equals. And now we are going to simply do sine. And use your variable button here. See how theta is in there? Sine theta. It will show up as x. No big deal. And uh, then hit graph. And see what happens. So there is your sine graph. Now roughly that's from about negative 2 pi to positive 2 pi right here. Right. So that's what we can see. There's negative 2 pi exactly. 
there's positive 2 pi. Notice that the amplitude is 1. Okay? And notice that the period is 2 pi. Because your decimal works with, de uh, because your calculator works with decimals, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.28 right there. Okay? So, uh, is anyone having problems getting this graph on your screen? It's okay, hands all over the auditorium. I see those hands. All right, the other thing you want to check is you hit mode. Make sure you're in radians here. Because if you're in degrees, you're not going to see that. Because it's, it's going to ask, it's going to think, um, you know, 0 to 360 is one cycle. And you don't have 360 on your screen. So do radians, then you should get this graph. All right, anybody else need help? All right, so now if, if you have this graph here, what I'd like you guys to do is to try to... I want you to put another graph and you go down to Y2 and I want to see if you can figure out how to make a sine graph with an amplitude of 1.5 instead of 1. Go ahead and do that. An amplitude of 1.5 instead of 1 and I want you to simultaneously graph both of them. Okay, talk amongst yourselves if you need to. What do you think? How are you going to transform this graph into a graph that has an amplitude of not 1, but 1.5. So I want to stretch it up a little bit. Okay, go ahead. If you've got to figure it out, maybe help a neighbor. Okay, so this is what I'm looking for, class, right here. So I'm looking for that second one like that. If you've got this, give me an amplitude that has uh, 0.5 as well. Yeah. And if you don't have it, look up on the screen. This is the number you change in front there. Okay. The A value. Remember on our transformations that number in front there? That was the one that was our vertical stretch. So. Now that we're all together, let's do that. 0 0.5 sine x. Let's graph that simultaneously and look at the beautiful design we're making here. Isn't that great? I am amazed. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is take a few minutes on your calculator, and this is the only time, one of the only times I'm going to allow you to play Use sine, cos, different amplitudes, play with the parameters a little bit, make a fancy design. And I will come around and look at your fancy designs, and I will grade 80% of your course grade on that design. Okay? So there you go. Take a few minutes to have some fun. Okay, so here's one of our winning combinations right here. There we go. That's how you make that thing. There's a lot of cool stuff here, so good job. Yeah, it's on there. All right. I can't believe I finally made it. Like, okay, what? so that's the intro to sine and cosine graphs. Um, yeah, there'll be a part two come up.